so my name is Fanny, F-A-N-N-Y, Curta, C-U-R-T-A-T, and I'm the art historian consultant for Beyond Van Gogh, the Immersive Experience. All right, and uh, can you, first let's just uh, start off by telling me a little bit about uh, Beyond Van Gogh, the Immersive Experience at Grand Rapids. So Beyond Van Gogh is really a blend of cutting edge projection technology and a traditional body of work, which is Vincent's painting that allows the audience to literally set foot into this beautiful world created by Vincent van Gogh and really just follow and vibrate along with the colors and everything moving along with them. So it's really a truly unique way of enjoying his work. Okay, cool. Um, how many paintings are gonna be included in the exhibit? So we have about 300 paintings, knowing that he painted over 850. If you add all of the drawing, the sketches, there are over 2,000 pieces. And so it's really about showcasing through these 300 paintings, the journey through his work from darker period when he's learning and then discovers brightness when he gets to Paris and this sheer explosion of color when he gets to Isle in the south of France. Okay, and what are some of the paintings that are going to be included in the exhibit? Well, I think it would be cruel to do an experience like this and not include Starry Night right. and the Sunflowers. So, of course, people will recognize these major, major works, uh, the irises and self-portraits, of course. But then a lot of the most um, unknown paintings that allow really to see this evolution as is going through light and discovery of colors. And so you have at the beginnings paintings that you might not think and associate with Van Gogh. And then you just see the evolution of the brush strokes with everything moving around you and just the light showcasing just how much he explored brightness by the end of his career. And so it's really going through this journey of light. Okay, and, and then what was the thought process between, because I mean, you had to narrow down the paintings. So like, what was the thought process picking out specific paintings for other paintings of his. So with this idea of having this evolution of darkness through light, it was going first to the earlier period. So you have, people might not know, but a very important painting for him was the potato eaters. And so it's really showcasing pieces that were important for the artist, but also important and showcasing well this evolution that he had of his style, of his brush strokes, of his colors. So really going through this narrative that we wanted to take the audience on, which is to focus not necessarily on all of the darkness in his life, which is, a big part of who he is, of a myth that was sort of created around him. And people associate him with the ear cutting incident, the struggling poverty, the madness. And all of this is true, of course, to a certain extent, but that's not what you see when you look at his work. You don't see the darkness in his life. You see the remedies he found for the darkness. And so it was really about picking the pieces that really show this evolution of brightness and colors. And so pieces of Paris where you see instantly that the sky gets brighter and then the evolution of the brush strokes when he meets the pointiest and then it goes to the south of France and those long brush strokes where the colors are put side by side no longer blended and it's just filled with tension and movement. So you're talking about this evolution does the evolution kind of uh, exist on a linear timeline or do you kind of like pick and choose from different time periods that just kind of fit with the motif? as you go through. With him, it's sort of a very easy fit to go with a sort of chronological approach because okay. his career as a painter is pretty short. It's 10 years and most of it is actually five years and pasted most of it two years. And then he painted over 70 paintings in the last two months of his life. And so as his evolution was quite short, you can really follow this trend, which also goes, also goes along with the places he was in. So he's learning first when he's still in the Netherlands and then he moves around a lot and gets to Paris and then meets the Impressionist and you see the brightness and then the South of France and then Auvers sur Oise, the last place he lived in. And then it's just this turbulent movement. So it's sort of easy to have this sort of chronological baseline Line with him, but we do have some scenes that are more anachronic where you get to have all of the self portraits together, for example, and that allows you to see just how widely different they are from one another, knowing that we only have one photograph of him available at all. And so we get to know him through his own eyes, his self portraits, and you see just a multiple facets of him when you showcase them together like that. That's very cool. I'm, I'm super excited to go see this exhibit myself. <laughs> yeah. uh, can you tell me a little bit about like the experience of going through the exhibition? 
So as the audience gets in, you have the first room, which we call the introduction hall, where you get to know Vincent a little bit more. It's actually quite unique in art history to have such a treasure trove of information and insight on an artist in his own words through this correspondence that he had over 18 years with his brother, Tio. And his brother was everything to him. So he really confined it in him. And through these words, you see just how much more there was to him than this sad episode, dramatic episode of the ear cutting incident. So you get to know the artist and also see how he still connects to us. The whole goal of this experience is really to connect the 21st century audience to a 19th century artist and seeing how still relevant he is and still very inspiring. And so this first room allows that, puts really all of the base elements for the audience to have keys and then enjoy the work itself. And so they get to a second room that's called after that the waterfall room, which acts as a little bit as a primer. It prepares, it's a portal to indicate that you're not going to a traditional museum type experience. And also to prepare you a little bit physically because it can be a, little, a bit trippy to just enter then a room where everything moves along with you. And it's just a dreamlike journey once you get to that last room, which is the immersive room where really all the magic happens. Okay, so how many rooms are in the exhibition? Three. Three rooms, okay. So, and then in the final room, I'm assuming that's where you see the majority of the painting? Everything is there. So the first room, really, you read their panels, you see big uh, pictures blown up of uh, details of his paintings and you see the texture, but you have these texts, his own words. And then the waterfall room is really like a portal. So you already have projection, but it's really more abstract. It was really for the animators to set loose and adapt Vincent's vocabulary to their own language of animatic tools. And then the final room, yes, entirely dedicated to his work, the paintings and the movement and animated. Can you tell me a little bit about like how this whole idea came to be? So everything was created in October, 2020. We started the process then and it was so during the pandemic and it was all about creating an experience in which people could have a cultural event and still be safe, have a lot of room around them and be really uh, able to enjoy the experience. And then Vincent's work sort of became an obvious choice because even though he never went through the multiple crises we're going through right now, he's so widely known to have struggled and for the hardship in his life, but then being able to sort of overcome them through art and really showcasing the beauty of the world and finding solace in this beauty, in the colors. He saw power in colors. And so it was really about having the inspiration of somebody who was able to create Starry Night while he was cooped up in an asylum cell, you know? And so it resonated well with what we were going of having somebody while we were cooped up inside, somebody capable of transcending the ordinary and seeing something extraordinary in a bag of onion on a kitchen table and being able to see just the view out of window and seeing the beauty of it and a pair of boots by the door and just really having that be the inspiration of the show. Okay, and then uh, there's gonna be music playing uh, during the exhibition. Um, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the pieces that were chosen and how they were chosen and curated for the, the different rooms and whatnot? So music plays such an important role in this experience, like I said, of having this bridge between a 21st century audience and a 19th century artist, music is key for that. So we went along, not necessarily having time period appropriate music, but really showcasing just how his work is timeless by choosing different composers and artists from different periods. So you have Miles Davis, you have Don McLean and Starry Starry Night, of course, and you have Max Richter recomposing Vivaldi. So really different type of music and really they're all blended together uh, so that you recognize some of them. It may seem familiar, but then again, it doesn't take you away from the experience with it taking your focus away from the work itself. So it was really about blending the two and just showcasing how timeless his work is and how he's going through all of these different time periods and still having value and resonating with them. So does the music, is it more of like put together in like a medley format or does it, so, so yeah, so it transitions as the art transitions? 
everything is very seamless. So you'll never really feel the transition. And it's all recomposed with our composer, G.S. Cote in Montreal. And he did such a wonderful job. And all of the music is available also on Spotify. So can, you can also look it up. It's also on the um, accessible through the website, which is vangograndrapids.com. And so everything is available there. And you can just see all of the different pieces. And he really worked in putting them together so that they would blend, so that it would be, again, this very seamless journey that really is just there to support the work. Awesome. And then um, how long does it take to see the entire experience? It takes about an hour. So people can stay longer in the first room if they want, take their time to read or spend more time in the last room and see multiple loops of the show. So it takes really about an hour, but people can gauge their experience the way they want it. Okay, and about how long is the, is the loop in the uh, final room? It's about 35 minutes. Okay. And then in the waterfall room, also you have a five minute loop of projection there and then all of the text prior to that. So yeah, about an hour. Okay, and then uh, how big are the different rooms? So the like, whole experience size? is over 30,000 square feet. And so it's divided, The of course, the last room is the most massive one, but it's all divided into that square footage, yeah. Okay, and then um, I'm, this sounds like a really family-friendly event. I plan on bringing my two children. Uh, are there any like specific ages that would do better or worse, or, or just just for anybody? It's great for everybody, and not only for different age group. It's wonderful for kids because they get to run around, they get to follow the brush strokes, they're twirling along with the pedal in one specific scene, and it's just beautiful. And it's also great for people either who know a lot about Blango coming in, like me. It was just about the fantasy of going beyond the frame and inside the work itself. And for other people, you know, museums might be intimidating or they might not see how they relate to uh, a 19th century artist. So it's a great way of developing this connection with Vincent. And hopefully people will get to know him more and maybe they'll be curious next time they're in a town where Van Goghs are hanging on the wall and they get to experience the beauty and the magic, the aura of an original Van Gogh. So it's really, really great either for an introduction to Van Gogh and to art or just really exploring and changing perspective on something that's already known, familiar and loved. And so it's really, really for everybody. It's a wonderful experience for all type of audiences. Awesome. I'm very excited for it. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think we're pretty much good. It's really a big show. It's been all over the place. It sold over 3 million tickets around the world. It's really, really such a beautiful experience that we've been working on so hard since October 2020. And so I'm really excited for people to, to see it and for it to keep growing and steam like that. So yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, I, I know it's it's really popular here. When we wrote the first article about it, it blew up. Tons of people were sharing it. So I know there's a lot of people lining up ready to get inside and uh, experience the exhibit. So thank you very much for taking time out of your day to talk to us about it. Well, my pleasure. Thank you for having me.